For lesson six, we're going to be in section 19.5 of your book, and we're looking at uh, just some further uh, pieces of statistics, uh, now getting into uh, some dealings with medians and quartiles, a little more use with the calculator. Um, I know we've dealt with medians already, but you're going to see their connection to quartiles here as we go through. So uh, if you take a look at the list of data that we have, uh, starting with the four here and ending with 17, um, the median we've already talked about, the median is the middle term. Um, does need to be in order from least to greatest in order to I properly identify the middle term. Uh, so if you look at these, uh, with this has 10, or sorry, yeah, 10 pieces of data. So because there's an even number of terms, we don't have a true middle term. Uh, but if I do break this in half, uh, I got five on the left and five on the right. Uh, the middle term would just simply be the average of these two terms. And so 10.5 would be our median. Uh, but we're, we're getting into in this section now what we call the lower quartile and the upper quartile. The lower quartile is simply the median of the bottom half. So right here you saw that we broke the data in half. I got five on the left and five on the right. So if you just look at the bottom five pieces of data, their median or their middle term would be the six that you see right here. Um, and so that's what we call the lower quartile, also known as Q1 or the first quartile. The upper quartile is the median of the upper half of the data. So uh, right here we have the top five terms of the data. And so the middle term for the top five is that 14 sitting right there. So that's what we call the upper quartile or Q3. Um, and so those are kind of the two new things that we have to be able to identify uh, in this lesson here. Uh, so right here, again, you got the median. We had the lower quartile. We had the upper quartile. Um, the inner quartile range is just Q3 minus Q1, or the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So right here, you can see we're doing 14 minus 6. Uh, so 8 is the inner quartile range. Uh, this little formula is also actually in your formula packet. I'm not sure why they put it in there. It's a very simple formula, but it is there. So uh, if you ever ask for inner quartile range and you do happen to forget how to find that, uh, this is in the formula packet. So um, I wanted to show you also, just as a reminder, uh, just some uses of our calculator when finding these things, the median, the lower quartile, and the upper quartile, they all show up on your calculator too, on the same page that we've been using for this whole chapter which is those one variable statistics page. Uh, these were at the bottom of the page if we scroll all the way down where we found the median on uh, some of the earlier lessons. Um, so if we had a list of data like this, uh, again, this is just more of a reminder than anything else. Uh, but if we wanted to find things like the median, the lower quartile, and the upper quartile, um, even if we're given a frequency list with our list of data, we can still use our calculator for this too. So. Uh, let me just remind you of how we've been doing that so far. Uh, but if we go into the calculator, so uh, I'm going to use my X's as list 1 and my frequencies as list 2. So let me jump over to the calculator here for a minute. Again, if we go to Stat, Edit, uh, we have our list. And so I already put the information in here. So I put the X's under list 1 and I put the frequencies over here under list 2. And then if we just go to Stat, and go over to calc and we have the one variable statistics really important that if you are using a frequency list that you tell your calculator that otherwise we will get the wrong answer so um, you got to tell your calculator what you have in list one and list two and so those are both identified there and so as i just hit enter all the way down so as i mentioned earlier uh, you can see right here they give us the lower quartile or q1 um, if we scroll down, there's the median. I have the upper quartile, or Q3, right there is 50. Uh, so if I wanted the inner quartile range, I could do 50 minus 30 uh, and get 20 as my inner quartile range. So all the same data comes right off your calculator as well. So that's always there for you. Uh, we don't have to do all these things by hand. We can take advantage of the calculator for those things. But I still always like you to know where that information is coming from. So I wanted you to see how those things are calculated even within your calculator. Um, as we go down here, uh, the last part of this lesson is the graph that goes with finding uh, quartiles 
is the box and whisker plot. So you've probably seen this before, uh, but this is the kind of the classic graph that we use to represent quartiles within a list of data. So um, as already mentioned, the, the important data that you need for this, uh, which is the, the minimum, the maximum, the median, the lower quartile, and the upper quartile, these are all found on your calculator. So uh, even though some of these we can identify just by looking at the list, um, even, you know, the lists tend to be a little bit longer than this. And so uh, we're just going to put these in the calculator to identify those things. And then I'll talk you through how we create the box and, box and whisker plot, as well as what this is used for within a test. So I'm going to take a second here. I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to put these into my calculator as my list of data. Uh, just another reminder when I do that, when you go to stat and you go to edit, uh, to clear out your old list, you go all the way up to the list title, hit clear, and hit enter. And that wipes out the old list that are in there, so clear, enter. And so now I'm going to put in the new list of data that you see over there on the left. So I got the 7, 8, 12, 12, 13, 20, 22. So there's our list of data. So when I hit stat, calc, and I got my one variable statistics, uh, notice in this case, I did not use a frequency list. So I need to make sure that is not identified here. So we did not use a frequency list for this one. So as I hit enter, if I scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen, uh, you're seeing over here all the main bits of information that I have listed right here. So these are the five things that you need to identify when you're making a box and whisker plot. So we got the minimum is seven. We got the maximum is 22. We got Q1, the median, and Q3. And so all those things are found on the calculator and that's where those numbers came from. So here's how we make the box and whisker plot. Um, the min and the max are the whiskers of the box and whisker plot. So right here you see we have the min. We got the max right here at 22. There are three vertical lines on this box plot. So right here I have a vertical line, right here I have a vertical line, and right here I have a vertical line. And those are Q1, Q2, and Q3. So uh, Q1, the lower quartile, is the first line. The median, also known as Q2. And then this is the upper quartile, or Q3. So those are all identified right there. And then I just wrap the box around from Q1 all the way to Q3. We use the box. So this is our inner quartile range from Q1 to Q3. And that's it. That's, that's all we need to do to create our box and whisker plot. Um, but here's where we go from there. And this is something that you need to understand. These are the test questions that you can be asked from this box and whisker plot. So the reason we call this Q1, Q2, and Q3 is because this data has been broken into four quartiles. So from the minimum up to Q1, this whisker right here represents 25% of the data. This first box represents the next 25% of the data. Then I have the next 25% of the data in this box. And then this whisker is the last 25% of the data. And so it's broken up into four quarters. So if you look at this drawing that I have right here, let's just say that these, uh, that 400 people were surveyed and they were asked how many days a month they exercise. And so these were, all the responses were gathered and they were, so two was the smallest amount that anybody exercised. Uh, 20 days was the most that any one person exercised. Uh, the median number of people said they exercised for 10 days a month, um, so on and so on. And so these 400 people uh, were, were represented by this graph. So remember what I just said, this is 25%, this is 25%, this is 25%, and this is 25%, which means if I had surveyed 400 people, then 100 people are in this area right here from two to eight. The next 100 people said they exercise between eight and 10 days a month. The next 100 people are from 10 to 17. And then the, the top 100 people are from 17 to 20. So when you're asked something like, well, how many days or how many people exercise between eight and 20 days? 
Well, from 8 to 20, how many people would that be? That's 100 plus another 100 plus another 100. So 300 people exercise between 8 and 20 days. Or if we were to say, um, how many people exercise between 2 and 10 days? Well, I got 100 right here. I got another 100 right here. So 200 people exercise between 2 and 10 days. Um, and so those are the types of questions that you need to be able to answer based on a box and whisker plot. But if you just keep in mind that the data that was surveyed is broken up into four equal parts. So because we had 400, right, that puts 25% of those people right here, another 25%, 25, and 25. So we broke it up into four equal parts, and that's how many people fall within those areas of the graph. And so if you just know that, it makes answering these questions really simple. Um, and so those are the type of questions that you're going to need to be able to answer from a box and whisker plot.